And just uh, type something in chat when you actually in game, so I know you're there, and I'm mm -hmm. not leaving you behind. Or let me know. I get away from Scuddy. Um. A double wave from Audi. Okay. And then where's JTron? You guys can go ahead and start uh, loading up the library um, or the module, the PHP. Library. Bottom right corner, the little library banner. And then in the bottom left corner of the library pop up, you'll see modules. And then there should be PHP Deluxe. And click on the load and wait for that book to open up. It's probably going to be the longest load out of everything that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And the triple wave from JTron, because he's got three arms. Or is that a high, is that a high kick? Is it a yeah, cheer high a kick? Yeah, wave and a high kick. Okay. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to one-up everyone. Because, you know, I'm competitive like that. He wants to be different. <laughs> right, lucky me. I have the PSB open already. <laughs> And tell me when those books are all open and lag seems to have cut down a little bit. All open. Yeah, all open my end. No lag. At least I don't think there's any lag. I can't, don't notice any. One second while I try to crash the game. Nope, I'm lag free. Alrighty, and then under that library tab, um, you'll see at the top, you'll see GM, play, create PC, and all. Go ahead and click the create PC. That'll just make it to the um, the options you really need to create a character. Mm -hmm. And then click on the PC banner and either right click and go to create item or click on that little round circle and hit the plus sign. I would have asked how much you guys know about Fantasy Grounds prior, but you know, we've had some issues, so I'm just trying to do it step by step now. No problem. Yeah, so fine by me. Ended in my game. Say that one again. I said I think the world just ended in my thing. It's just lagging still. Okay, you're you're not totally done downloading then yet. It'll clear up in a moment. Jtron, Scuddy, and just waiting for uh, Adi to get his. Okay, there we go. That looks good. Mm -hmm. And then... Go ahead and rename your character, open up your character sheet, rename your character to your names. Did you guys uh, kind of know what uh, class you guys are going to be playing or want to build? Um, a little rogueling. A rogue and JTron's AFK moment.
wait for him to get back. Um, how much do you guys know about the ability scores? I mean, how much do you guys know? I guess I can ask you guys while we wait. So, like, what have you guys done in D and D personally? I've done the value score that you subtract the um, uh, a specific num a specific number uh, accordingly with the ability score for from a total of twenty seven. Okay, that's a point by system. I usually do that. Uh, I usually do uh, do that with my players. Okay, so you do the you've done the point by. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to be doing on here, um, just to keep it simple. Uh, we could do a standard array, which does fall under the point by, um, mm -hmm. unless you already have a specific point by set out that you want to use. So I'm just um, going to go with the standard array. And I'm going to post that in the chat real quick. So, uh, depending on the characters that you want to use, unless you have another mm -hmm. standard array or point by value that you want, it could be like three fifteens and three eights if you wanted. Um, that's one of the min max values. Uh, that would be the standard array that is, you know, it's perfectly acceptable. Uh, go ahead and put those into the stats that you want your character to have. Okay. And yeah, okay. Audi's got it. Jtron's got it. Whoa. I opened up Scuddies and for some reason it's like super huge on me. I know. <laughs> you can readjust those windows by uh the bottom right corner. My window is fine. I think it's not 13. huge. Okay, so we do the abilities first because Fantasy Grounds is kind of quirky, and uh, if you do your race first, it will um, not add in those bonuses when you add your stats. Mm -hmm. So it's just uh, kind of one of those order of operations to make life a little easier. So mm -hmm. the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and select race if you click on the race banner. Uh, don't mind the gloamings. I was working on a character class. But any of the other mm -hmm. ones, go with the D&D &D PHP Deluxe because it's got all the good information on it. Mm -hmm. And then when you find the race that you want, go ahead and drag the banner or the shield over to your race. Forest Gnome, High Elf, and Jtron wants a... I think the uh, Tiefling. The 8 in strength really matches the Forest Gnome really well. Probably. Okay, so we got uh, the races, and if you notice, it changed the stats on their stat abilities, so it gave them their pluses. Mm -hmm. And that should also have shown up under on the chat menu what it's changed. If you click on abilities on your tab on the right side, it should it should have automatically added in all of the um, abilities that traits that um, your race gives you. <clears throat> so next we're gonna do backgrounds. And that will allow for, um, we do that because of the uh, skills. And uh, choosing a background will automatically pick two skills for you. Now my mouse is messing up. Fun. No, it's fine. Just lagged up a little. We got a soldier. <laughs> I'm just going to do this. It's totally weird, but doing 
criminal works. <laughs> I'm a criminal forest gnome. You moved <laughs> doesn't, to... <laughs> doesn't sound quite right, but it's because um, I'm more of a free-spirited forest gnome. <laughs> and what yeah, they you took know the way of the forest, action, man. Was just me being free-spirited. All right, so if you look on your skills tab, you'll see a couple of those stars have been highlighted, and that's based off of your uh, your background. Ooh, cool. So mm -hmm. that, that gives you your proficiency bonus, which is uh, right next to your class level. You see a PROF, plus two. So that's uh, what that's adding those to. And now uh, we can keep on that same page if you want and go down to the notes tab real quick. And we will fill out the personality traits, the ideals, bonds, flaws. Notes. Okay. okay. So that okay. should be like, I'm going to click on criminal real quick. If you scroll down a little bit farther, you will see uh, like criminal specialty or. Uh, you got your feature, which should automatically have been added. And then you got the tables for the personality traits, the ideals, flaws, and bonds. You'll want to choose or roll two of the traits, and then a criminal ideal, a criminal bond, and a criminal flaw for the criminal, of course. And that is mostly to either flesh out your character if you have something in mind, or to help the DM to help input your backstory. Mm -hmm. Which would the specialty go into for... That actually goes under uh, the main tab under your background. Okay, so main tab. Kind of like that, just not there. Yeah, just put like, like add a dash to It'll it. It'll be adjusted. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Uh... I fixed it for you. Thank you. So, personality trait. Best personality trait ever. And you can drag and drop uh, the, the text from that onto the specific little uh, thing. So uh, bond or flaw or whatever, you can click on that actual text and drag it to your character sheet. I forgot to tell you that. Okay, done. Okay, if you uh, right click and on your background stuff uh, for the background tab opening, whatever it's called, the page uh, that you're going through, if you minimize it and just stick it off to the side real quick, uh, we'll be back to that in a couple of minutes when we get back down to the inventory. Mm hmm. Because there's uh... a. I've missed a point there. You want us to bring the classes now, or did oh, I just start something? We'll, we'll be going through the classes in a minute if you know what uh, class. Oh, no, it's okay, it's okay. I was just telling you to put the, uh, when you're done, put the, uh, the background yep. tab off to the side. Minimize mm -hmm. it or just leave it up and put it off to the side. Okay. Ooh, that would go really well with the fact that my charisma's not super high. Because, <laughs> you know, most rogues have super high charisma, and I put it as a 10. So it's average charisma. I'm a elf that put my charisma in 8.
is it? Okay, so everybody's got I their traits and ideals and all the good stuff. Okay, so now we will move on to the class and level. Mm -hmm. We're just going to start out at level 1, so uh, if you go under the class banner and pick whichever class it is that you want, again, go with the PHB Deluxe version because it's got all the extra stuff on there. Okay. Okay, what is... Just waiting on Jtron to figure out what he's playing. Tiefling, Urchin, I'm assuming you're playing a priest, right? Well, uh, either you're psychic or I'm, I'm creating a really basic character. <laughs> <laughs> a Tiefling, Urchin, uh, Cleric as well. A Paladin, Paladin, mm -hmm. yes. Hey, you could, I don't know. It, I, what I want to see is a lawful evil paladin. Someone needs to play that somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that's they, possible. They, they did. Technically, <laughs> in 5th edition, you can do it. Is it? Uh, uh, but then you wouldn't really be a paladin, would you? You'd just be a big guy with a big sword and big armor. An anti-paladin, <laughs> anti maybe? It's yeah. Essentially, it's an anti-paladin. But because the... The new 5th edition thing is that you don't have to be lawful good, you just have to have an oath to your god. I mean, technically mm -hmm. that's what a paladin is, is someone who has an oath to their god who's a knight, I guess, but it's not the, the traditional paladin type thing. No. Actually, you can do a lawful evil paladin if you choose the right god. Yeah, so, I was just thinking that, like, that a chaotic good paladin with an oath to homies or something like that. I think uh, oh, oath, uh, the oath of vengeance is more the lawful evil paladin. Homies was also one of the biggest trickstores of all of the Greeks. <laughs> so, that's more vice well, Yeah, he had time. like special bursts that made him run fast. He mm -hmm. had to be a trickster. Yep. It was forced on him. <laughs> it was not his life. <laughs> All right, Druid. Tiefling Druid. Interesting. Okay, uh, with your class um, tab still open, if you scroll down to the very, very bottom, you'll see like uh, hit points, proficiencies, which all should be added under your abilities. Mm -hmm. So uh, proficiencies, if you look under there, they should all be added. We are going to move down to the Inventory tab. Um, scroll down to the bottom of my class tab. And we're going to put the starting equipment on there. Mm -hmm. So it says for the fighter, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, it says chainmail, ore, leather, leather, longbow, and 20 arrows. And then um, it's got a link to the weapon list and the armor list and adventuring gear and tools. So mm -hmm. choose one or the other, and then uh, if you're choosing like the the chainmail, just go to the armor list and choose chainmail, drag it over. If you're doing the leather longbow and twenty arrows, um, the weapons will have the longbow, the armor will have the leather, and the adventuring gear will have the arrows. And then move down to the next one until you're done with the uh, starting equipment. A martial weapon. Uh, 
there. So for a thief, you'd also include two daggers under your weapons list, right? You should, I think it's yeah, listed it on there. Yeah, it in there, I just... Rapier or I short sword. <laughs> Tools. Uh, thieves, maybe? Somewhere? It's, uh, it's, here, it's under the, uh, links uh, thieves, tools. tools and kits. Yep. Okay. So I have uh, adventurer's gear, a burglar's pack bag, or a, a burglar, a dungeoneer, or an explorer are Correct. my options. Um, I also have arrows that I should probably give myself. Um... And I'm just gonna go with uh, your your standard burglar's kit because, you know, I'm 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 a thief, I'm a rogue. So I got a rapier, a short bow, twenty arrows, a bur uh, burglar's backpack, leather armor, two daggers, and thieves' tools. Okay, so you guys got all your starting gear. Uh, yes. Except for my quiver. I should probably give myself that, because I don't know how effective walking around with just 20 arrows in my hand will be. <laughs> okay. I'm almost there. I've just got to get my uh, explorer's pack, and that's it. All right. And then after you get those, I uh, see we're still waiting on Scuddy. Or does Scuddy not get um... it? I'm almost ready. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Dungeoneer uh, or the Explorer's Pack, I think, is what you got left, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking for them. Ah. There we go. Done. All right. Now what I need you guys to do is open up your background again. That's why I asked okay. you to put it off to the side. And you'll notice mm -hmm. that it says uh, Equipment for like the criminal it says a crowbar a set of dark common clothing including a hood and a belt pouch containing 15 gold so you can add that equipment in now as well oh and a, a game set apparently i forgot to keep open the kind thing so items is now open These items have, uh, they have to be manually put on the inventory or no? Can you just drag it? Uh, some items... Apparently they have two crowbars. <laughs> hey, double fist in that door. I need the door <laughs> open now! <laughs> when, when one crowbar won't work, I've got a spare. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the question, Scuddy? Was that you have to put the items manually, or can you, you can just drag it into some the of them? Inventory. Some of them are under the adventuring tools, and you can drag and drop those. Uh, others, like a dark set of clothing, probably not. Or dark set of clothing with a hood, uh, you'd probably have to manually enter, and mm -hmm. then you just base it off of the weight value of something similar. A belt pouch, I don't is probably on there. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, the pouch isn't there. Anything is there, so I'm gonna put all of this manually. Um... Right. An urchin gets a pet mouse. How would I do that? Uh... Say pet mouse. Uh, that would, uh... Most likely... A pet mouse. Uh, just, uh... Add a new line. And another... So right-click create item like I just did for you right there, and to say mouse, you can name it whatever you want. You could go uh, with scabbers and be, uh, you know, your your wizard Harry, or um, you know, whatever you want. You think that's a, a a solid way to write in 
uh, dark common clothes with hood. And I'm like, common clothes, uh, dark slash with hood, <laughs> or slash, or W slash hood. <laughs> How much should dark clothes with hood weigh? Uh, probably. Regular clothes? Yeah, like one or two pounds, something like that. All right, I'm going to go look up how much common clothes weigh and assume that it's the same. Clothes common three. Three? Yep. There we go. And so that is now three pounds of clothing. It's a lot of clothing. Not really, I guess. That's about normal. Oh, well. I'm weird. Don't mind me. <laughs> so I added your pet mouse for you, and I also want you guys to look at, you see right next to the weight, you see a bag slash like a shirt. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, bag means that you're carrying it, and the shirt means that you're actually wearing or equipped with it, so that would be like your sword, your armor, so on and so forth. Um, if it's a weapon or armor that you're actually going to be using or are currently using, I would say leave it equipped because that shows up to your action tab. And to add the gold, I see two of you have already done it. I um, believe you need to make them capital letters there, Audi, okay. for, for the thing, uh, for the money. Uh, that's just to allow the Dungeon Master to, when distributing um, money and items, it'll automatically go into that section. And it, it might not read the lowercase gp. That's not a problem. Let's see if I can manage to get everything into its place without getting confused. I think I'm pulling it off. Okay, you already know about the backpack thing. Cool. Yeah, I... I it's one of the few things I know how to do. Okay, so for the other two, uh, Scuddy, I guess you know how to do it as well. Uh, mm -hmm. You can actually delete the, <laughs> uh, the empty on the backpack, so you're not putting a bedroll into an empty backpack, which would still be empty, Come but yep. <laughs> there you go. And now everything's going to be skewed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, well. I forgot to delete the empty. So everything's going to be skewed until I can go through and delete all the empty. I have so many spaces in my inventory, just of empty space because of something. Fortunately, empty space does not weigh anything. True enough. Why is there so much nothing in my inventory? <laughs> that has so no much more. of it. Okay, Be so whenever you add something to your backpack, if you hit enter when you're done, you create a new line. That would be if why. You, enter, you just click <laughs> off. That, well, that yeah, just, well, just well, click well. something else and it'll sort itself out. Hopefully so. While Maybe you, later. While you're, I think it's working on it. While you're uh, fixing your backpack, I am fixing your empty empty space. The nothing, <laughs> the nothing from the never-ending story is not going to take over your backpack. Thank you. I'm I'm. Apparently, I have gold pieces just chilling somewhere. Just one GP, just chilling. <laughs> I don't know what that's from. Well, now it's gone. No, that was a whole gold piece. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I see you're done. Um... Don't need to restart it. <laughs> okay. Was so that Legend of Zelda? You, you started to yes. sing that music. Oh, I almost could listen in my head. I, hey, I just, listen! I just heard you humming, and whatever notes I heard from you humming reminded me of that song, so I started humming it. <laughs> so, blame everybody. Is that Zelda does, or something? But not me. Does anybody have any questions at this point in time? I should have been asking that, yeah. at least. Um, I think uh, I'm pretty solid. Okay. Uh, I have a question. There is a solid 
uh, I can call it set of bone dice or set of deck of cards, you know. Okay, that would be... Two game, gambling tools, I don't know. Yeah, it's just asking if there is. I didn't look look at for it before. Uh, that would be under... Uh, let, me it... let me see, let me see. I'm gonna look with, look at it with you. Yeah, I think it uh, doesn't exist, alright. Okay, um, it's daggers okay. are equipped. Dark clothes are equipped. Playing card set. Mm -hmm. If you type it, if you go to the items tab and type in card, playing card set will pop up. I use dice. Mm -hmm. You could also type so dice. Much more fun. Um, I'm gonna put deck because I want to be different. Because <laughs> I can just set up and be like, roll some dice and be like, haha. Okay, oh. everybody's set to go on equipment? Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think so. Alrighty. Um, if you want to pop back up to the skill tab, I can quickly <sighs> go over okay. that. Mm -hmm. Most of this is automatically filled out through uh, adding in your background and your class. Um, you'll see that you have stars on some, and then other ones are blank. And basically when you level up, your total is going to go up for um, your proficiency bonus. Mm -hmm. So those are the skills that you're actually proficient with. So. Uh, you have a better chance of doing those. It's not saying that you can't do other checks, it's just that you're not skilled at doing them. Okay. Do you have any questions about any specific skills as far as what they might cover, or...? Mm -mm. That's sometimes left up to the, the game master. I know, like, okay. I, I'm trying to hide something, deception, or sleight of hand, or whatnot. That's why I have perception and investigation. And there is and deception and you. sleight of hand. <laughs> I'm very Trying. perceptive and investigative, and I can deceive and hide stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alrighty, if we scroll back down to the notes tab, you guys go ahead and enter the the gender, age, height, weight, alignment, uh, deity. As far as um, like the alignment, type it in like it would be typed, uh, not not just LG or neutral evil, or not NE for neutral evil, type in neutral evil with the neutral and the, in a neutral and the C and uh, whatever, E, you know, the, the first letter capitalized. That way if somebody were to cast protection versus good or evil, it will actually apply to those um, creatures that it would apply to. Size, that's what I was looking for. Uh, three or four feet on average. Depends on where, if you're wearing your platform shoes or not. Right. <laughs> and a weight of... 38. Because I'm a little slender. And then under the appearance, right below flaws, um, this is a good spot to... Um, basically, you're walking around town and somebody looks at you, what do they see? Uh, that way you don't have to keep repeating yourself or whatever, you can just kind of copy and paste it in a chat, like, you you see before you, blah, you know. Uh, for my next character that I'm going to build, it's actually going to be a, um, I think he's going to be a human rogue, but he's going to be missing a pinky, because his background. There you go. And, you know, he's going to be really, he's going to be street urchin, like, dirty hair, a very unkempt whatnot. But, you know, describing that character wouldn't be too hard. I could just, you know, this is him. 
he he doesn't smell the greatest because he lives on the streets, kind of thing. You know? Yeah. So, um, that's one thing I I need to figure out is what gnomes look like. They look like gnomes. Uh, I da, da, da. let's see if they have a race. Like they have a description of being flaxen haired and skinny. If you click, if you click on purple. the races, if you click races and click on gnome, there's a thing that says gnome with a thing right below the race. If you click on that, it'll pull up a picture of a gnome ranger or fighter. I'm not sure. I think ranger. Okay. I think that's a female gnome. But that's a general idea of what they look like. So we're going here, and you said go to which? Sorry. Races. Races, gnome. gnome, and then at the very top, click on that little uh, shield. Got it. That's kind of, okay, so you know, blonde just hair, a general. Fair skinned, short, slight in build. Okay. But I have a feeling their skin color is generally the same random shades as us, as humans. Anything from a light color to a browner color. Yeah, it's about right. It doesn't say anything different um, about them and the forest gnome subrace. Find ochre skin. Well, you can just type it. All the appearances is just text. There's nothing general or that you'd be able to drag or whatever. This is you describing yeah, your yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to find the right skin tone. I'm done. Because I'm weird. I'm gonna go with a a dark olive. Dark olive sounds good. I guess <laughs> I don't <laughs> it's know. It's really a light brown. Okay. And I understand. I'm jumping around a bit, but I've I was also you know. We also had a lot of delays, so I'm not 100% thinking straight. But I'm trying to get you through all of it. On the bright side, you each only have one race, to, or one race, uh, one language to choose. Actually, uh, I think mine are chosen. Scuddy's well. Scuddy's the only one that actually has a another uh, language to select. Do I? <laughs> okay, so, Scuddy, if you go under the Abilities tab at the bottom, you'll see Languages. Mm -hmm. And to get a list of all the languages, if you click the Option button in the top right, the little cogwheel. Okay. And then you click the Language button in the bottom left of that pop-up. That is a list of every language. Done. <laughs> All right, so this is just generally, essentially, I'm, I'm I'm light brown with dirty blonde hair and eyes the color of color of the clear blue sky. I like the scholar better. <laughs> the eyes the scholar of the clear blue sky. So again, with the languages like the alignment and whatnot, you want it to be properly spelt. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I spelled that right. That looks right. Great, your brush. Great. <laughs> 
so yeah when you type it's going to come out like that when you type in a specific language and mm -hmm. only people who understand it can actually use it. it if i were to change a stat now that doesn't have any bonuses either way will it affect anything it would affect um if it gives it a plus or a minus it would affect all your skills will it auto change the skills yes okay what did you want to switch around? I was going to drop my charisma by one and be uglier. And be a little bit smarter in the wise d d department. Okay, for that, um, you wouldn't be able to do. Okay. Uh, just because the max um, number you can put in, in, in into any one single stat is 15. And if you put 15 in your intelligence and then added your forest gnome, that would have given you 16. Yeah, I have 16. Um, I'm just I have a point by that's off to the side that I'm trying to tweak to match up with a like an arcane trickster, and the, okay. the lowest or that I get a pl I can get it so it's a plus three dex, a plus two intelligence, a plus two wisdom because wisdom is also kind of a needed thing for rogues. Um, okay. Um, the forest okay. gnome gets plus two to intelligence, so you could do a 15 and still get 17 intelligence. If you got the point by calculator up, that would be perfectly fine if you know what your stats are going to be afterwards. Okay. You just have to manually enter the additional bonuses because it's not going to, it's going to overwrite those bonuses that it gave you. So if you were to put 15 in intelligence, it's not going to give you that plus 2. It's just going to be leveled out at the 15. The only thing, I'm not changing intelligence, I'm changing uh, wisdom. So it's going to be no, nothing that my character, my race changes is affected by it. So okay, it shouldn't be a, a, an issue. Just as long as it's within those that standard point array, it doesn't matter too much as far as uh, the... Uh, this is this is the best you can do with a, a twenty seven point by, for for you still having a an unevenly dispersed character, so they're not super retarded. But my character is ugly. I like how you waved your hand in <laughs> infernal. <laughs> Waves hand in infernal. <laughs> yes. It okay. was an accident. <laughs> so, did you two understand? <laughs> did you two understand how to get to the languages, or to look at what languages are available? Mm-hmm. Adi, yeah. Jatron. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay, she's got hers picked out. Nomish. All right, we are just going to briefly look at the log page, and then say hi page, and then bye page. It's not really used unless you're in Adventure League. It could be used for extra notes, but that's about it. So notes in the Adventure section and then faction information in the faction section. Uh, faction, you know, uh, depending on the Dungeon Master and how long the game goes, it could possibly use, say, you join the Harper Scouts or, you know, okay. a Thieves Guild or something like that. And then the Adventures could be, you know, you typing about your past adventures or your past deeds or you know we did the lost minds of fen delver or whatever adventures i completed that one with this character kind of thing that's about all that would be used for unless you want to keep other small notes on it then we'll head down to the actions tab ding Sorry, that was my Yahoo me or my Facebook Messenger. All right, so under the Actions tab, I think there's only one spellcaster here, Jtron. But everybody else should see um, their weapons and what have you up there. Yep. Mhm. Mm so for um, one arrows and dose daggers. Dose daggers, and you got two hand axes, so that's good. Did you take a bow, uh, Scuddy? No, I took two hand axes and a long sword. Okay. That's good. Then for Jtron, we need to go ahead and open up your spell list. That'll be under your uh, class. And it should be on there somewhere. 
Where's that? Yeah, I just uh, opened up the spell thing and then just set it so it only shows the druid spells. Okay. Usually the uh, the class has a link to the spell list, but I don't see it on the class. That's weird. Uh, it's in the uh, spellcast feature. I just saw it here. So if the other two want to follow along what we're doing, um, if you click on the spell um, banner on the right side, and then uh, click at the bottom where it says source, you can click on the druid, and it'll pull up all the druid spells. And you can click on level zero, because it should tell you how many uh, cantrips and first level spells you get. I decided to be a little more gnome so my alignment shifted slightly, but everything else is good. <laughs> okay, so Druid gets two cantrips and two first level spells. So if you go to level zero spells, you can get like eight spells there to choose from, two of them. And what you're going to do is, of course, uh, drag those shields to the spell area. Uh, Pronobus, you there? Might not be there. Alright, so... For third level Arcane Tricksters, I know three cantrips, three level one spells. And yes, I did do magical level up really quick stuff. Alright. Um, I was just curious uh, how Pronobus did the leveling up on hit points. Average hit points. Okay, so just the base stuff when you level up. Okay. Spellcasting, arcane tricks or spells, cantrips. I'm obviously going to have Mage Hand because that's something it gives me. And then I get two more cantrips. Now I get to try and figure out what I want my cantrip to be. Uh, okay, you're going Arcane Trickster? Yeah. Okay. I was like, are you getting spells? Why are you getting spells? Minor Illusion for a cantrip. And then Message. Because that allows me to still be the sneaky, you know, ahead of things and doing something and then give a message back to my team. You know, it may not be the super most useful one, but it'll be something. All right. And it should auto add, I believe, uh, when you level up or ask you what uh, path you want to take. And mm -hmm. someone's gonna hate me for this, but I'm totally putting Find Familiar as my spell. Okay. I'm saying that because you could do. <laughs> I'm going to be spawning an owl that will fly around and uh, distract the people I'm fighting. At least it's not a crow that co uh, keeps poking anyone's head. Okay, so those are my... There, I need one more spell, because I know two spells. No, I know three spells. I know three spells. I'm stupid. What am I doing? Right, isn't there a... Uh... A, uh, what's the word? 
there is a word. Is there a word? The bird. The bird is the word. <laughs> that just happened. And it didn't go on, which is, I think, the, the more important part here. Restriction. Isn't there a restriction to what spe type of spells you can take? As a uh, arcane trickster, yes. Um, it's uh, they... wizard, and they actually have a, a section that's arcane trickster spells. Yeah, when you uh, but... when you click on the spell list, uh, the source, it'll say like uh, rogue, arcane trickster, or something like that. Yeah, arcane trickster at the top. It gives what they can take. Each class actually has their own little spell list in that spell banner. Yeah, enhancement, enchantment, and illusion spells are the ones you can do. Mm. And also, like, one of your choice. Yeah, so I'm going to have to do enchantment and illusion for my other two. Pretty much. Yes, so, I should know because I play a, uh, an Eldritch Knight in a oh. different one. <laughs> uh, disguise Self seems like a solid one for a rogue, right? That's definitely a good one. And maybe... Um... What is Tasha's laughter? It makes people laugh un, uh, uncontrollably until they save. And that they, they fall prone. Very useful. Basically, they do a ruffle. Rolling on floor laughing. Ruffle now. It's almost, it's almost a spin. Um, and that's an enchantment. So I can use that. That sounds like a super useful thing. And Jatron, when you get done with uh, adding your next spell, go ahead and um, click on your class and drag and drop uh, the shield onto your class and level uh, two more times and do any prompts that pop up. And that will level you up to third level. Unless you want to, you know, multi-class into, say, a druid paladin or a druid warlock or something. A druid barbarian. Those are always fun. Oh. Right. Uh, where do I find my spell casting modifier? It should be automatic, but I believe um, druids are based off of wisdom. Yeah, it's wisdom. Spell casting. Wisdom, yep. So, for that, are you like, uh, which spell are you wondering about? Uh, whether I should go Healing Word or Goodberry. Probably Healing Word. Good, Goodberry, I think, only does 1d, uh, at least in 3.5, it only did one hit point per berry. Yeah, but you get 10 berries. Oh, you get, right you get 10 berries in 5th edition. You only got 1d4 plus 1 in 3.5. Oh, man. Yeah, well, up was... to 10 berries. No, I need yeah, it's up to 10 depending on your roll, I think. Well, let's see. Healing Word is a bonus action, which is nice. And your spellcasting ability modifier, which would be plus if we, two, if we add it, one d four plus two. Yeah, it's one d four plus two. Oh dang it! Uh, I put both in there real quick just to look at them. Up to ten berries, so. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about a roll or anything like that. I need to open up the tab I just accidentally closed. 
Well, I guess uh, the one thing you'd have to consider is, uh, oh, I mean, you could possibly, you know, you make the good berries at the beginning of the day. Um, but the healing word is a bonus instantaneous action as well. So it could be like an on-demand and 60 feet person away, you can heal somebody. So it's really up to you. Are you planning on being in the, in the thick of things? Or are you planning on staying back? You know, that that's, you know, flavor right there. I mean, I'd base it around your character. And then, let's see, you're going to be leveling up as well. So at level three, you actually get uh, four first levels. Four level one and two, two level, level twos, two. as well as having still two cantrips. Wild shape and a druid circle. Okay. So. Uh oh, I heard a sigh. I'm just trying to trying to think stuff up. I'm putting um, my my spells on. I think I got it. So I'm good. <laughs> Spells. You get spells as a uh, Eldritch Knight. Oh, Eldritch Knight. Everybody's going weird classes that I've never played before. I haven't played much fifth edition, so I'm like a fighter with spells. You don't need spells. Uh, okay, let's go to the druid. Who needs the spells? Apparently, you both need spells, or all need spells. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just, that's only because I, of course, went the obscure rogue way. Hey, arcane tricksters used to be really good in three point five. I it's something I've never played before, so I figured it'd be fun. Never you know? played before, uh, Arcane Trickster. Uh, um, Three point five. Funny story, sad story on my part. Um, I was DMing a game, and I didn't know the ins and outs of Arcane Trickster because nobody had ever, ever gone that route for me before. And uh, my buddy asked me, "Hey, can can I get uh you know like an endless quiver of arrows?" And he spent the money to make it like a plus one or plus two arrows or something like that with fire oh, damage wow. on top of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it took most like all of his money, and he was like a a decent level to possibly even have that. I'm like, yeah, sure. And it just it got really, really, really out of hand. <laughs> Things yeah, went yeah. crazy from there. Things, uh, it's like, okay, what can I throw at this guy to actually take him out? And, and the world imploded. Basically. <laughs> All right. Uh, at least you didn't have so a terrible experience with Unhearted Arcana. I'll be right back. I'm going to refresh my drink real quick. Okay. What do we have left to do? Mm, let me see. I put my spells. We learn how to level up. Da, 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 da. Have you equipped your armor, your weapons? Yeah, yeah, Is everything I all right? those in my inventory. I made sure those were equipped, including my common dark black or my common dark clothes with hood. <laughs> Have you experimented to do a log for? Huh? Oh, uh, just like... at the log tab to try to make a adventure note. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, I see how that works. And then, okay. ooh, you can put starting HP, gold, awesome. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very cool. Oh, I didn't know that so I could do that. I think we have done everything. Okay. Now, now we I need to remember to... how to export a character. Well, have I'm you guys gonna... done your personality bond ideal flaw? Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah. Um, personality yep. is the Hold best on. way to get me to do something. It's to tell me I can't do it. Ideals is redemption. Uh, there's a spark of good in everybody. Uh, Bond is someone I love died because of a mistake I made. I'll never allow that to happen again. My flaw, because I have crap charisma, is I have a tell that reveals when I'm lying. And my appearance <laughs> is light brown skin with blonde hair and eyes is the color of the clear blue sky. All right. Did you guys have any questions on um, any of the things that we've covered so far? No. That's... It's doing pretty solid. Now, Rob 2E does um, have like spells for the feats and the abilities and stuff like that. I'm not sure how many of your guys's 
actually require any of those um, as far as like features or traits like uh, a ancestry probably mm -hmm. could be a auto um, an always active kind of thing for advantage versus charmed or sleep and I failed to actually put that into the modules. I was trying to clean up my modules there and I moved everything out besides the PHP, so. <laughs> it's all good. It's okay. Uh, I think I've, I can't think of anything else that I can try and find on here. I mean, actions, maybe, uh, I don't know. Well, f as far as your actions, um, yeah, as I said, like the features, the abilities and features, whatnot, uh, would probably be one of the only things that I don't have readily available. Um, uh, for the gnome, the gnome's cunning, you have advantage on all intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws against magic, so, you know, that would be one thing that you would put on your actions tab. Um, yeah, so add... Um, I don't know the ins and outs of all the coding yet, so uh, add, that would be um, add, power. add a power and then add it for that and then advantage on int vers or verse magic. And what, what is it? Gnome's cunning? For? Is that what it is? Um, well, we got two that I've seen so far. Uh, Fey Ancestry and one for um, to do to do. No, I'm just cutting. Thank you. Um, well, that doesn't... What you want to do, one at a time, and I can write out the script for it. So, like, describe Fae Ancestry for me. Just tell me what it does. Um, you have adventure on saving throws against being charmed, and Matt can put you to sleep. So, you have immunity to sleep. Okay. Are you posting those in the um, channel too? I will in a minute. I'm not the best at this. It's going to take me a minute. But... I, think there's, I think there's a list for it. Let's see if I can find it real quick. I found it. I don't know how to do that one. I'll have to figure it out later, but... Okay, so let's see. Barbarian, Cleric, Druid Circle. Which uh, Druid Circle did you go? Uh, I went Circle of the Moon, I think it was called. Why? Oh, I found one for Nature's <laughs> War Totem. It's for the Circle of the Land. Yeah, the only thing Spider I've got it for that is uh, Wild Shape. Anybody how to know how to make it so you can export characters? Mm, no, I don't. I completely forgot how to do it. Uh, you log out, and then you go down to Manage Characters, select the campaign that you were just in, so you have to remember the name of this campaign. Log in mm. there, and now you have the DM privileges, so you can go to the PC, and from there, uh, edit list, and there's a blue button that says export. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll be right back. Well, I'm still in chat, obviously, but... Yeah. He really liked it, his chat to the sheet. I'm not sure if that one automatically updated for you. I'm seeing here the script code that I need to have advantage save for a specific ability, but not against 
a specific status type. Okay, so that might be one that uh, you just have to manually say, hey, I've got resistance to this. Know your character kind of thing. No. Uh, in fact, there is um, okay. it a program. Uh, my DM got to do it with my resistance on my barbarian. So I think you can do it. All right, but I don't know how. Because I know I've coded rage before, uh, but that's advantage check against... No, uh, the, no, the rage is resistance. You have resistance to damage oh. from physical okay. damage. Yep, there's that too. So possibly right, try yeah. type in resist all in capitals with the semi or the, the colon and then type in magic. That might work. Because it's hard. all magic, so any magic damage as well, not just the things that uh, charm. I think you must uh, choose an element or a status as sleeping or charmed. Welcome, stranger, to the most prosperous land in all of Nosgoth. Oh, I should check that. And whoever just followed me on Twitch, uh, thank you for the follow. My phone is being really laggy, so I really can't see the updates on that. I'm just looking at it for the chat. Oh, you stream? Uh, yeah. You stream this kind of stuff? Yes. I am streaming this class. I asked you all before I did. Oh, I wasn't even paying attention. I don't mind, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you can just go immune colon... Right, I appreciate thing. the help. That's what you have a wonderful day. I gotta get out of here. Alrighty. Well, thank you for um, taking the class. Yeah, it was awesome and super helpful. Well, I'm glad I can help. I'll be doing it again uh, tomorrow as well. Or I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I might be on tomorrow random times. Um, if you guys want to stop in and work on another character or something like that by yourself, I'll probably, probably leave it open up for a while. <laughs> cool. Have a good one. Have a good night. Thank you, Varric. Good night. Yep. Are you leaving too? Um, oh, no, no. <laughs> so I was going to uh, do a little, a little combat thing. No, no, you, we can do it. We can do it, sure. Okay. Uh, I was just asking you if you are going to do the class tomorrow, well, which time will be? I might actually, my wife has got like a long day of work and I have tomorrow off so I might actually do a few classes tomorrow if I can if there's people interested in it so it'll be multiple times throughout mm -hmm. the day okay okay because uh, about that person that I told you that was interested in the class he's my boyfriend but he's right behind me it's it would be noisy if he talked in the same time that with me or know the microphone -y. so I think he's gonna be in the your class tomorrow okay mm -hmm. so you guys should see a sheet pop up a, a little map can you pass me your string link so I can follow that. Did it? Keep forgetting you have to actually put the HTTP on there. I've already go www and that doesn't send a link. No, it's okay. I got it. I got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've got um two of the quick classes up on there, as well as uh, Lay Runes GM DM training on there as well. I've been like streaming mm -hmm. those consistently Welcome along with the game. The well, thank you for the follow. I'm assuming that was Scuddy. Yep. <laughs> Welcome, stranger, to the most prosperous land in all of Nazgoth. That's uh from. Ah, why am I blanking out Legacy of Cain? 
Okay, so you guys see the sample combat uh, map? Mm-hmm. It's got like a little road and a little tent or whatnot. Some hills and a poor, uh, few trees and whatnot. Okay, so who left? Was it Adi? Yeah, Adi left. Okay. So if you click in the top, you see the two cross swords. Mm -hmm. That is going to be your combat tracker. Combat tracker, yep. And you guys are on there. Now you guys can go ahead to your main tab. I'm going to have you guys roll your own initiative. I should probably explain that um, double clicking on any of those things with a little dice next to it will actually make that roll. Like this. Yep. Uh, so that works for all the abilities. If somebody says make a wisdom, uh, wisdom check or save, or not wisdom check, no. saves are on the right, checks are on the left. And then the initiative is right in between your speed and your armor class. Mm -hmm. And then all the skills also have checks as well, with the plus one, plus two. Um, all have a little d20 next to it. So if you were told to make a check or to, um, you know, make a perception check or whatever, that's where you would go for mm -hmm. those. Now you can also click and hold and drag uh, your initiative or whatever down to that bottom bar that's at the very bottom. Um, see, it's how it's mm -hmm. a commonly used thing, and then all you have to do is press that F number, and it will roll that initiative for you. You can do that with mm -hmm. uh, a, your attacks, your damages, your, you know, my fire resist or my, you know, save versus magic or whatever. If it's a uh, on instant cast or reaction or something like that. Um, but I have a little goblin here guy for you guys to go ahead and try to fight off. I might add another one just because one doesn't seem to be a lot. I'm going to get Jaytron a picture. Seeing as how he's playing a tiefling, how about a... Uh, we'll use Krug. He's a half orc because that's just the first picture <laughs> that popped up. <laughs> if you got another picture you want to put in there, Jaytron, go for it. Right, I'll look through what they've got. Hey, you don't have to. You can change that at a later date when you join a game or whatever. It's just for now, something rather than a, a black gray square. There you go. That works too. Mm -hmm. So down there at the bottom, you'll see that little circle G. That's him. If you, uh, on the map, hold down both the left and right mouse button and then click from you down to him. Oh, I still got it on the circle ones. Uh, you can see how far away he is. Um, I'm, I couldn't do it. Hold down both left. Having... There you go. Oh, Jtron got it, I think. You hold left and mouse, right, oh. uh, and then drag. No, I got it. And that'll that'll give you an idea of distance. Mhm. Mm you can also you can also um like hold down control and do it, and it'll give you a circle. Mhm. Mm Alt gives you the cone. Shift will give you a square. So, I mean, for different spell effects like, say, Flame Hands, or I think it's Flame Hands, mm -hmm. or like a Dragon's Breath is in a cone or whatever, it, it allows you to make those measurements out for you. But the Goblin is, Hi. you know, digging through, per se, that carriage or whatever, so Jaytron rolled higher. It'll be his turn. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you are 50 feet from him. If you yeah you controlled and left clicked on the goblin, so that has you targeting him. If there's two ways to actually make an attack on somebody, so if you wanted to, um, say cast, I don't know which spells you got. 
not animal friendship, whatever. Uh, what? We got a scimitar, hellish rebuke, hellish resistance. You don't have a ranged attack, really, that I can see, besides, like, animal friendship. Yes, I expected more uh, fighters and rogue and stuff. Okay, well, we will put you after... I'm going to lower down your initiative real quick. Well, I mean, I don't mind sneaking up on a goblin. <laughs> okay, well... Up to you. I, I put Scuddy ahead of you so Scuddy can get up there, do whatever. I'm going to give the the uh, goblin a few more hit points, though, because, you know, you guys can pretend to cast spells at it. Yeah, all my spells are for protection, so I think I have to throw a hand axe at him. Okay, well, uh, what's the range on a hand axe? Mm, let me see. That, just second. click on the shield that's at the end of the hand axe, and it says range 2060. Uh, 2060. So I have to walk a bit, I think. No, no, not necessary. So i going to use the target system. You can either uh, control click on the goblin, or mm -hmm. you can drop the dice on the goblin. From this range... You're more than 20 feet. Your maximum range is 60 feet. So you'd actually click the disadvantage for the to hit, which would be the, you know, uh, the plus five for the dice. Mm -hmm. So you could throw the dice, but it's going to be at a disadvantage, which is going to throw two and take the lowest of the two. Mm -hmm. But you're more than willing, you're more than able to do it. Okay, I... Just hold control and click it because my mouse is failing a bit. So I missed. You <laughs> missed. Okay, so you get one action and one movement, and then depending on if you have them or not, you'd get a bonus action or bonus attack with being a fighter if you have it. I'm not sure if you do or not. Well, I'm gonna move it to, let me see, 30 feet, 30 feet, 30 feet. 30 feet, yep. 30 feet, yeah. Gonna walk to, yeah. Okay. And some DMs um, make it locked, so you actually have to pre plan it, and then uh, the DM will do that. So what that would look like would be this. I'm going to do it. Go ahead and try to move it again. Mm-hmm. I, now I can move directly where I want to. Oh, oh yeah. you left it. Yeah, I locked it. So some DMs will do that, so you have to plan out your movements, or if they want to stop you at a certain point, they can. I'm just trying to Just to show the camera. Yeah. I can move directly to here, or I can fact my movement like this thank you make a route yeah and to do that it would actually be once she got to this point right here because it doesn't show up what you're actually doing until you click it uh, and then dragged it down to here so that little white box that pops up and then on the mm -hmm. dm side i say accept move and she moves and she follows that same path and then she can either click this little down arrow here and to pass a turn to JTron, or um, mm -hmm. I can do it for her. And she did it. So now this is going to move over here to JTron, and whatever JTron wants to do, he could make two move actions if he wanted to to get up next to the guy. I think he's got, what, 30 feet movement? Yep, 30 feet. So you can move 30 feet and take an action, or double move. Is there anything else you do on JTron? Uh, I would like to cast Bark Skin on, uh, on Scuddy. Alright, so that 
makes it so that the tar- that uh, Scuddy's AC can't be less than 16. Okay. I'm not sure if there's any easy way of coding that. I'm sure, as I said, with like um, Rob 2E stuff, I'm sure there's a, a code for bark skin. It just makes it to where the minimum AC is 16 for that person. Is what it's saying. So that would take up your one of your spell slots for second level. I don't remember. So you get two. You get four first level spells. Okay. No, that's a second level spell. So you would have one spell left for second level. Not sure why. That's odd. Okay, no, it did. It showed up. Okay, underneath your weapons, it shows that you used up a second level spell slot. For some reason, it's showing a first level as well. We'll take that one off. Okay, so then you would pass your turn to the goblin. Unless you had a bonus action of some sort. And he felt the hand axe come by, so he's going to speak in goblin at you and say, what are you doing? This is my wagon or whatever. Because I don't have any of that prepared out. Like every good DM, nothing's planned. And he will... He will uh, go ahead and run up on Scuddy and make an attack. Probably going to fail. Of course, I forgot to target you. Uh, that would be bad. And completely missed. I think I added him before I uh, put him on the combat tracker, so that's probably why he's not working right. And just to use something different, I could attack him, but uh, we will instead cast Leap spell. So I have to make a 5d8 roll. And... Oh, shit. Sorry. Oh. oh no, you've nah. him unconscious. Double him unconscious. Just a sec. Uh, can you take this off? <laughs> I think you can do that yourself. If you click cool. on the little effects mm, button there. No, in fact, I can't. Strange. Not on the, well. uh, it's only on you that you can take him off of. I'm going to try to make him him slumber, but I think I'm going to get it. 5d... oh, d6? No, d8, shit. Just a sec. I don't even remember how many points goblins have. 19 HP, he has this or less. Well, I I initially put his hit points up to 1,000, so you guys could, you know throw attacks or whatever at him, but I lowered it back down to, oh, I think, so 10 or 12. so he's not slumbering no, at all? No, he can slumber. <laughs> he can slumber. You would be able to honestly, in a normal game, get him to slumber. He's not a uh, legendary he's goblin. Mm-hmm. If he's a slumber, well, with the target on, we can click on effect, and he will be unconscious for the turns subscribed as D uh, points 10. After and turn that after shows turn, up he, All right, there. will be subtract, subtract, yeah, subtracting. Yep, and he falls when you're unconscious. I do believe you fall prone automatically, so um, any melee attacks are going to be automatically done. If you want to attack Jaytron with like um, uh, mm-hmm. your scimitar or whatever, without clicking any other buttons like advantage or whatever, it should automatically um, give you advantage. Okay. And it's probably going to kill him, because, you know, it's a goblin. And you missed. Unless I roll. (laughs) (laughs) 
the sight of a sleeping goblin scared you, I guess. I, I, I don't even know how to describe that one. <laughs> Maybe the snores? Yeah, that could be it. Hey, yeah. He snored and, the, and he said, ah! <laughs> so, I don't believe, is there... Let's see. Uh... There's no save, I don't think. No, there's no save. Just yeah. him, and if he gets he's hit. slapped or he gets hit. So, um, in the combat tracker up here, it shows that it was a 10, and then the turn rolled by, and it should have dropped down to 9, which it did. And then it'd be Scuddy's turn. Yep. <laughs> Simple attack. How are you guys missing? We are, in... <laughs> we are dumb, that's all. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid we're outnumbered. <laughs> the <laughs> goblin is, is <laughs> hero level, even He's though I more. dropped his hip. I should have just left his hit points normal. I, was, I figured you guys would have killed him off in one hit. <laughs> yeah, they have 10 hit points. Just so you know, they have a well, 15 I mean, armor I'm class. I'm willing to, to try again, if I ever get the chance. Is Scuddy doing anything else? Are you backing away from this uh, no, no. unhittable no, no. goblin? I'm so, uh, just unhittable as him. <laughs> so I'm gonna stay here. But <laughs> Yes, he's very agile for a, for a goblin. <laughs> a sleeping he, goblin. He's like a he's like a drunken master, but for sleeping, because he's still missed. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how good games go oh, bad. No. Because if this was an actual <laughs> game, you know, you guys would probably be attacking or being be being attacked by something much larger than a goblin. And he got the goblin asleep, but the big guy's much on you while you're trying to kill off the goblin or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, next try. I don't know how this is going so bad. Maybe, maybe uh, instead of attacking him, cast cast true strike. Yes, true strike. <laughs> I can't. Yes, I, I, I lost my strike. action. I lost my action. On your next turn, cast true strike on Jtron. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can do it. What? I think this is the most hilarious sample encounter I've ever ran. <laughs> we got a hit. We got a hit. We are just too stupid to hit somebody he's, uh, that's sleeping. And now the goblin level gets four. to wait. He's level 3. I don't know what, what's going on. <laughs> and then I accidentally uh, cast kill wounds on him. Alright. Healing word. Uh, my favorite weapon that I still have yet to create would be a Dagger of Cure Light Wounds. It deals 1d4 plus your modifier, strength, dexterity, whatever, damage, and then heals for 1d8 plus 1 when you hit them with it. Now the, the bad part about that is, is what happens if you stab them and leave the dagger in, then it heals over, and it gets kind of messy, I, I don't know. So he's going to stand up and... I let's heal over, that's what happens. He's going to stand up for his move action, and then he's going to be mad at Jtron for wake waking him up from his peaceful slumber. And miss Jtron. <laughs> Done. Finally it hit. And then the combat rolls over to Scuddy. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, well, let's try to cast three strike him at him. Okay, you cast that on your... Oh, wait, no, you what? Okay, no, you, you cast it on yourself. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you were trying to go for Jtron or not. Still, no, no, it's, it's self. It's a self skill. 
Well, no, true strike is a range 31 action. I don't know how it... I don't know why I was targeting the goblin, but... Okay, I'll try to target the Jtron. But I think it's not going to work. No, it didn't. Yeah, it applies to you, and then yeah, when you soft. make an attack against it, it's going to mm -hmm. uh, give you that. Mm -hmm. That's that's weird how that one works. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just it's, uh, maybe probably because she's got to hold the concentration for it. That's why. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. I'm still learning some things about fantasy grounds. So. And then, are you moving or are you? No, your turn? I'm gonna okay. stay put. There we are. First tech in, and now we're rolling well. It did. It didn't apply the modifier. Right, because I don't have the modifier. Well, she tried to target you with the modifier for the. No, it's it's for her to hit the uh, the goblin, not me. Yeah, true. True strike allows you to uh, point at a creature and then have advantage on your next attack on it. Mm -hmm. I must have misread it. Okay. I think it's the... on, your, on your next turn. I swore in 3.5 that you could give True Strike to an ally and give them basically a plus 20. Alrighty. Are you moving any, Jatron, or are you done with your attacks? All right, and he's got this nimble. Okay. Okay. So he's going to take one last swing at you guys. And since how Jtron was the one that did the attack, ooh, he hit. He snickers and a whopping seven. And since how he's a goblin, he and has a reaction. As a reaction. I cast Hellish Rebuke. Yay! So failure means that he failed his save, and you deal a crap ton of damage. Yay! <laughs> Jatron, the Infernal Mancer. Or Infernal Mancer, the uh, druid tiefling. He just won by himself. I I, I was just the there the looking hey, closely. You, you put him. You put him to sleep. <laughs> yes. When did you take? I, I oh, wait, you did take you. Sleep you. for study to see how goblins sleep. <laughs> no, no, don't hit him yet. I'm hearing his snoring. <laughs> Oh, can't you smell that? Oh, I just have to hit it. <laughs> so I deleted that token. Um, do you guys have any questions? Do you guys want me to go over anything else again that we covered? Or do another, you know, throw up like 10 more goblins for you guys to fiddle around with? Well, no, I think I get the good. gist of it. <laughs> I think I understood that. Oh, what the thing. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to put in the chat down here a uh, link to the survey then right now, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys could take the time to fill that out. Uh, I know we had a nice little hiccup, a couple hiccups there at the beginning, and I apologize for that. <laughs> um, but it does okay. help out the college in and of itself with uh, how the classes were and whatnot, and information on, you know, how long you've been playing and whatnot, to help uh, better the classes up. Okay. 
Yeah, so this reminds me of the fact that I actually don't use a true Shrek correctly in any of the games I actually use it. Yes, I always I always perceive it as like I put magical energy into my sword that gives me advantage on whatever attack I do next. It's not that, it's just no one ever corrects me. <laughs> I think it, that was fun to reveal uh, something that I had a class before. Say that again? Mm hmm. I said, can you Refresh say that? Refresh the learning. Oh, okay. And if you want to take these guys to uh, the Explorer's Guild for Pronobis, um, you would just exit out of here and then go into, what was it, um, Character Manager or Open Game or something like that, Pronobis? Manage Characters. Okay. Manage Characters and then you can actually uh, export the character from there onto your uh, hard drive and upload it to him. Okay. Yes, I'm lucky I've already got three characters in Explorer's Guild, or I probably wouldn't take this guy. Okay, well, uh, it's just for information. Of course. No problem. Does anybody in the chat have any questions for me that I might be able to answer? In the uh, Twitch stream? If you guys don't have any? I don't see any popping up, so I guess that will be the end of this um, class. Unless you, as I said, unless you have any other questions or want to do anything else. Mm -hmm. Wow, my stream is really far behind on my phone. Like I just put up the uh, the the rest for you guys on there. <laughs> For some reason, my phone just cannot keep up with it. I think I covered most everything that I can think of. Mm -hmm. Alrighty then. Well, I will call that here then. And uh, thank you guys for coming to the class. Thank you for and the class. Not a problem. I guess yes, I'll be a good class. I'll be doing classes uh, quite often um, to try to get these CC 101s out. So hopefully they will get better uh, over time. Less stutters and hang-ups. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to work on this. Uh, if you have my stream up, you can kind of see this CC 101. I kind of want to make my own flow chart for it. So it's kind of like what I, I've been going over. Um, Leroon has one posted up, but uh, you know everybody's different on how they cheat, on how they teach. So, all right, you guys uh, have a good night. Good night. Bye bye. I'll leave this up for a little bit longer if you guys want to fiddle around, but I'm going to stop the stream now. Okay.